Welcome to Grammar 5C. In this booklet, we will be going over prepositional phrases, we'll review infinitives, and we're going to do some sentence diagramming with prepositional phrases. So let's just jump right into the prepositional phrases. So we already have learned a lot about prepositional phrases. We first learned about them in Grammar 3, we explored them a little bit more in Grammar 4, and now we're really going to delve into them in this booklet and throughout this whole um, series. So let's open up our books to the front and side cover and we've got our explanation. So we know that most prepositional phrases so far have described a verb, but in this booklet we're going to learn about how prepositional phrases can be adjectival. What does that word mean? Well, it's essentially the adjective form of adjective. So it essentially means that a prepositional phrase can describe a noun. So let's look at the examples we have on this front and side cover. The books on the shelf are unread. Well, where is the book? It's on the shelf. It's modifying the book so that you have a little bit more information about where it is. Same thing underneath. The cat, by the dog, is eating food from its bowl. By the dog is modifying where the cat is. From its bowl is modifying the food. So notice that when we have an adjectival prepositional phrase or a prepositional phrase that is modifying a noun, it is always next to that modified noun. Almost always that will be the case. All right, so now let's look at some of our own examples. The flowers grow near the fence. And then we also have the um, sentence, the flowers near the fence are pink. So let's look at this really quickly with this first one. The flowers grow near the fence. We know flowers is our subject. What are flowers doing? What is the action occurring? Growing. So I'm gonna double underline that. Then we have the phrase near the fence. Now we know this is a prepositional phrase. What is it telling us in this sentence, near the fence? Well, it's telling us where the action is occurring. It's telling us where the flowers grow. So we're gonna circle it and draw an arrow to grow, which hopefully this looks familiar because this is exactly the type of prepositional phrase we've seen so far in grammar. But now let's look at the next one. We have the flowers near the fence are pink. All right, this is kind of tricky because we have two nouns before the verb. So what do we want to do if we need to find our subject? We cross out our prepositional phrases. And in this instance, near the fence is going to be our prepositional phrase. So if we read the sentence without that prepositional phrase, we have this sentence, the flowers are pink. Well, now we obviously know what our subject is. It's going to be flowers. And what is the verb are, which of course it's not an action verb, it's a linking verb, and it links uh, flowers to pink. Pink is modifying flowers and the predicate, making it the PA. So now we have to figure out what we're going to do with this phrase near the fence. Well, we see that near the fence is modifying the flowers. It's telling us where the flowers are. So we are going to draw a circle and an arrow to flowers to show that near the fence is modifying flowers. Now let's look at another sentence. Here we have the flowers grow near the fence for the pig pen. So we know our subject is flowers and we know that our verb is grow. Flowers grow. That's the basis of our sentence. Near the fence is our first prepositional phrase. So I can cross that out and I know that it's telling us where the action is occurring. So I can circle it and draw an arrow. Now we have the phrase for the pig pen. Well, I'm not really sure what I'm doing with this because what I could look at is if I get rid of that first prepositional phrase and I just have the second one, we have the flowers grow for the pig pen. Well, that doesn't really make sense for the pig pen to be modifying grow and it's definitely not modifying flowers. So if we look at it back um, with the rest of the sentence, the flowers grow near the fence for the pig pen. Well, that prepositional phrase for the pig pen is modifying fence. It's modifying an object of the preposition and a different prepositional phrase. And it's telling us what the, the fence is for, why there is a fence, however you want to frame that question, but it's not going to be modifying anything outside of fence. And that's one way to notice if you have a prepositional phrase modifying 
a different OP, then um, it won't make sense if you take away that previous prepositional phrase. So once again, we're getting into um, very detailed work where you really need to understand um, how these phrases and the words are connected to each other. So take your time, have some fun with it. Don't um, get frustrated if it maybe takes you a couple tries to get this right. Um, so now we're going to move on to infinitives, which is review, but obviously we've learned a lot about infinitives over the past couple of books. So let's review what we've learned. Remember, infinitives can act as nouns, adjectives, and adverbs. So they can do just about anything that other words can do. So the, the first sentence that we have in that front um, explanation is, my favorite pastime is to read. To read is renaming the pastime. It's giving us a new name to pastime, making it the PN. Um, remember, when you have a PN, you can flip it and say, to read is my favorite pastime. It still makes sense, and it doesn't change the, um, the meaning of the sentence. So we can write PN over that. Then we have, the book to read is in the library. Well, to read is modifying the book. It tells me what type of book it is. Then we have, I went to the library to read. Why am I going? Why did I go to that library? To read, that's why. So it's an adverb, it's modifying the verb. But then remember that adverbs can um, modify more than just verbs. Adverbs can also modify other adverbs and adjectives. So the book, this book is fun to read. To read is modifying fun. Why is it fun? How is it fun? It's fun to read, that's how or why. So make sure you're paying attention. In this instance, the state of being is not being modified by to read. Fun is being modified to, by to read. So now we'll go over just a few more of these example sentences that we have come up with. Here we have two sentences. The song to hear is my new favorite. First, let's identify our infinitive. Um, remember, our infinitive is going to be a non-conjugated verb. It begins with to, ends with a verb. So in this sentence, to here is my infinitive. Our verb is going to be is, and our subject is song. So I'm going to underline that. Uh, as you can see, I've double underlined my verb. And favorite in the sentence is a noun, is actually renaming song in the predicate, making it a PN. So I'm going to label that as well. Now we have the verb, that, or sorry, the infinitive that we need to um, identify is what its function is. To here is modifying um, the type of song. We can circle it and draw an arrow, and we can see that it is acting like an adjective in this sentence. So now let's go on to the next verb, or I'm sorry, the next sentence. Students remain quiet to hear. Students is our subject, remain is our verb, and quiet is our predicate adjective. It's modifying the students, um, which is the subject, in the predicate. And then to hear is our um, infinitive in this sentence. So I'm going to put parentheses, and now I need to identify what is it modifying. Well, in this instance, instance, it's telling us um, why we're quiet, why the students are quiet. It's modifying the PA. Um, so it's acting like an adverb. It's modifying an adjective. It's not really modifying students remain. It's not um, modifying that to be verb um, or the state of being. It's kind of like what we just looked at with the prepositional phrases. If we got rid of that PA, students remain to hear it doesn't make the same sense as the students remain quiet to hear. It's giving us more information about why they are quiet. So now let's look at two more sentences. We have the girl wanted to hear. Our subject is girl. Wanted is our verb. And then to hear is telling us what the girl wanted. So it's acting like a noun. It's functioning as our direct object. It's receiving the action of being wanted. So I'm going to put the DO over our infinitive. 
And then our very last sentence, the class was listening to hear. Class is our subject. Was listening is our verb phrase, so I'm going to double underline that. And then to hear is modifying why the class is listening. So I'm putting my parentheses around to hear, and then I'm circling and draw an arrow to the main verb because it's answering a question about why or how the main verb is occurring. Remember that when you have an adverb, it's going to be modifying our main verb. It does not modify a, um, a helping verb. So um, as you can see, you've learned a lot about infinitives and it's a lot of details and a lot of thinking about how these phrases interact with the other words in the sentence. So take your time when you're going through this and really ask yourself those questions. What, how, why, um, those types of things so that you really understand how these infinitives are interacting with the verbs and the nouns and everything else in these sentences. Now we're going to finish up with some sentence diagramming of prepositional phrases. So let's jump right into our sentence. The show at the theater in town begins today. So once again, we have a lot of nouns before our verb and we need to identify our subject. So let's start by just crossing out our prepositional phrases. We have at the theater, and I'm going to label our OP now so we don't have to think about it later. So um, our OP in this sentence is theater, and I'm gonna write the OP over that. In town is another prepositional phrase with uh, town as the OP. So now we can look at the sentence without prepositional phrases and see the show begins today, making show our subject. So I can underline that. Begins is our verb, I can double underline. And we also know that the is modifying show. Now we're gonna just work down the line of this sentence starting with at the theater. What is at the theater doing in this sentence? Well, it's modifying the show. It's telling us where the show is occurring. Um, it's giving us more information about our subject. And then we have in town. In town is modifying where the theater is. So once again, we have a prepositional phrase modifying an OP. And then of course we have today modifying when it begins. When is the action occurring? So let's draw our nice long horizontal line for our diagram and let's um, intersect that with a nice long-ish line. And then we can start um, putting in our lines for our modifiers. We have one sole adjective by himself right there. Then we have a prepositional phrase that also contains a modifier. And then of course that prepositional phrase has an OP modified by another prepositional phrase. So I'm going to draw my diagonal line and my little horizontal line for the OP to sit on. Um, and last but not least, we have our adverbs. That's going to be coming off of our um, verb. Now we can start filling it in. Show and begins are the core of our sentence. That is our subject and our verb. Show begins. Everything else coming off of it and everything else in this sentence is just giving us more information about the show and when it begins. So I can start filling that out too. The is a modifier for show. Our first prepositional phrase at the theater is going to be coming off of show because it's telling us where the show is. And so that's going to be at theater. And of course, the is a modifier for theater. So it comes off of that. Then we have our final prepositional phrase, which is going to be in town. See how it's coming off of theater, not off of show. Because it's modifying the theater, it's not modifying show. And then we can fill in our adverb, which is today. Now, I'm going to digress a little here and have us focus in on our prepositional phrases. As you can see right now, we have um, a lot of different colors going on. We have our prepositions in purple. We have our OPs in pink. And the, our adjective, is blue. And this is to show you what these different um, parts of speech are and what the different functions are, things like that. But think about the phrases as a whole and realize that at the theater and in town, the whole entire phrase, they are acting like adjectives. At the theater is an adjectival prepositional phrase. 
So that's another way to think about it. You can look at each of these words individually, but if you look at the phrase as a whole, it takes on a totally different function. It's functioning as an adjective. Um, these are important things to note as we move through this Grammar 5 curriculum. Also, um, it will be helpful to think about when we get into the review books. So um, keep that in the back of your mind. It's not very important right now, but it will become important as you move through this level. Um, but for now, this is how we're going to diagram this sentence. And if you have any other questions, please contact the owner of your Gideon Center.